I'm Lauren Galt and Seathra is my first solo exhibition in London which I developed after undertaking a research residency in spring 2019 in Gasworks. The title Seathra alludes to a type of seed and also livestock within um, a historical context and have reworked that name to underpin some of the key uh, themes within the exhibition which include backbreeding, remembrance, disillusion and material travel and uncanny encounter. When I came to London initially to start research and work for the show it was really clear to me that I wanted to start from something that was only accessible in London and that object or thing was a book written by my relative under a pseudonym. Um, she was a woman called Martha Craig who wrote a very interesting sounding book called The Men of Mars in 1907 under a pseudonym Mithra. So I got my hands on the copy in the British Library um, from the archive department and uh, on investigating it further it was this incredible meander through um, themes that I felt were already present within my sculptural practice. So from there a really obvious place to start was to try and unpick or understand why she used the pseudonym Mithra or Mithra and when I looked into it a little bit more it was um, like the god of um, the in-between or the heir or the watcher of cattle. So from there I went to the Mithraeum and um, established contact with some of the leading archaeologists that uncovered and are um, learning and researching about some of the objects specific to that site. And materially, they're incredibly interesting because a lot of the objects were treated in really unexpected and uncanny ways, for example, being stabbed or scratched or killed. Or, you know, they're called, that's called being killed, I guess, in a way. That's how the archaeologists described it. And just trying to think about the sculptural implications of these treatments was really useful. From the Mithraeum and further reading around the cult of Mithras and actually the meaning of the name as a kind of guardian of cattle or in-between space, and my particular active uh, rural um, being and living, um, and also that of Martha Craig, she grew up on a farm, I really wanted to embed some of a language that's really known to me, which is that of current agricultural systems and the implications that those systems hold societally for those embedded within it and also those outside of it. And I often feel that when I'm, I'm sort of living in two lives, you know, I live in a city I go back to an extremely active rural context and I often feel that actually the rural context feels much more like the Mithraeum. It's a very um, felt HD encounter with life and death and it feels like a real privilege to be close to things that are essentially like contemporary dinosaurs. Like, you know, these things are huge. and. I feel like within that there is a real language um, that I feel like I am close, I'm moving close to and can understand and can use with integrity within the sculptural practice. Another uh, key sculpture or sculptures within the show um, are two dog-like sculptures. So they were built up and then acid etched away and they'll built up again. So what exists now hopefully is something that is dog-like but not um, you know completely correct but also is taken from a pose in the Mithraic statue which is the key moment where you know Mithras's knee meets the shoulder of the bull which meets the muzzle of the dog which meets this kind of knife and he never looks at what he's doing he looks beyond so in that sense it's almost like the howling dog it speaks to like a much bigger unknown scenario the floor-based work in the first space was something I'd been thinking about since I'd spent quite a lot of time in the gallery and that was the two features that are visible and that are the two ventilation grates. That was really useful and helped me think about how I would have produced a sculpture because it speaks to uh, a kind of exchange or bringing an outside inside. 
and also because of the nature that is being embedded within a site I wanted the sculpture that I produced to ask for a different type of attention and to do that rather than cohese a very um, uniform skin I wanted to um, write as many different processes and narratives and objects or scenarios from my research within this one um, very simple form and that involved um, producing miniature miniature cattle that are seen to be like returning to water in a kind of anti-evolutionary way to growing um, a type of chemical garden around some of the objects which behaves in a kind of more horizontal and vertical way in the, in a, in the context of being on the earth and it behaves in a much more radical um, a matrix like way in an anti-gravity context so I was experimenting with chemicals um, safely obviously and glass blowing where I took other um, key features and details very specific details from the Mithraic act and wanted to remove almost work backwards and remove um, detail in order to like access a core that could be used as another type of language. The light intervention that I made in the first gallery um, was developed from thinking a lot about um, objects that occupy different types of spaces and like a lot of my work I try to use materials or find materials that allow for types of um, encounters that aren't possible either due to geography or time and I discovered that um, pre-glass which is another material used within the show, uh, lanthorn which is a, t uh, a type of very very thin horn was used pre-glass in lanterns which is where the the name came from so it felt like it was a key moment to talk about in a different way the research within the show but also provide one of those types of encounters by producing a light which no longer really exists. In the second space I really wanted to change the gallery in some way and this is an approach I'd never taken before prior to this exhibition and I think it came from knowing the space from my residency and wanting to provide a completely different material encounter which was minimal in form perhaps but um, very loaded in terms of a, an encounter not unlike the Mithraeum. So in entering the second space uh, we constructed a new ceiling, uh, lowered the ceiling and installed a trio of vacuum formed transparent tanks that are filled with agitated water and I really wanted again like the lycra object and the long sculpture in the first gallery to try and invite or promote or ask a different type of attention from, from an audience but also to ask them a material to do something different so I wanted to move water up so as if all the um, objects have been dissolved or um, allude to a type of return to water you're actually underneath it and you're looking through into the familiar gallery ceiling um, and again tonally for me there is a type of unease that's involved with that work because aesthetically there's a lot of play on light, there's almost like a filmic refractive light through that passes through the works but then at the same time it kind of has this ominous almost risky feeling where you're not really allowed to settle on one type of reading which is something that I wanted to really embolden um, in that room and to kind of carry through as you perhaps like return out of the gallery space itself. Also in the second gallery there is a small sculpture which is low level and it's the cast of a 3D scan of an auroch footprint that I sourced from the University of Liverpool and so like the industrially formed um, vacuum formed panels that are embedded in the ceiling this is a cast of a 3D scan of an ancient type of cattle breed that 
is important as a motif within the exhibition because it's a type of um, cattle that has been attempted to be brought back or back bred um, or re-remembered or, or, or been made to re-inhabit um, the UK and Europe as an attempt to rewild. So it's, it's an important moment or in-between scenario where we're attempting a, an access or a return to a past or a different type of time. And that emergence of that footprint um, through the gallery wall itself is the last moment that you'll encounter when you leave the exhibition.